Hi there, my name's Vince from WhyMakeVince.com and in this video today I'm going to bring to you quite possibly the world's smallest travel solution for the Nintendo Switch. So, how do you dock it when you go away on holiday or you go on a business trip? If you were to take away the dock, the HDMI cable and the Nintendo Switch power supply, it's quite bulky. There's been solutions out there for ages, but they're still quite bulky. So here we have a little portable dock on the left hand side, but you still need to bring the HDMI cable and the power supply. But look what Brooke has sent through. So this is not a sponsored video, but Brooke do send me new products every now and then if they think I'm going to be interested in it and this is one that I would be interested in. So it's just down as a switch HDMI cable. It is going to be released at 40 US dollars which is I think quite a fair price because it gives you a complete solution. This here is a dockable solution for a Nintendo Switch and look how small it is. Really that is going to be a similar size to just a Nintendo Switch power supply alone. Yeah. So let's set it up and I'll show you how it works. And taking a look around the box here, we can see that the HDMI version is 1.4. We have the input as 100 to 240 volts, 50, 60 hertz, 0.5 amps. Output, we've got power delivery. We've got 5 volts, 9 volts and 12 volts with the respective amps next to it. And quick charge with the various voltages and amps labelled up here. So you wouldn't use this at home because you might as well just use your Nintendo Switch dock which works perfectly fine. But if you go away on holiday then check this out. A nice little carry case here. Open it up. In here we have my Switch. Quite a few games. Two spare Joy-Cons. A Joy-Con rail that you slot on the top. And now a nice easy way to fit the dock in here as well. Now this is the US version here. You can also get an EU version which is just slightly longer. Now unfortunately you can't get a UK version so for me when I go away I'm also going to have to bring a little adapter which is probably going to be a similar size to this again so it kind of defeats the purpose a bit in the UK but if you live in EU or US happy days and hopefully if it sells well you never know they might be able to make one for the UK as well but if you get the adapter then of course because it goes from 100 volts to 240 volts you're going to be fine using this in the UK. So on here we just have the same things that's written on the box there with the output power delivery and quick charge and check out the size of this thing it's absolutely tiny so if you're wondering how big this is itself it's 52 millimeters by 40 millimeters by 27 millimeters but the eu version is bigger so it's the same here and here but this way it's 89 millimeters now if we have a look at the cable itself it's a very nicely made cable it's braided and we have it clearly labelled up. So obviously this is the side that's going to be plugged into your TV. And we've got a nice metal surround on all the plugs. And then we have two cables coming off from that. One of them is going to be plugged into your charger. And the other one is going to be plugged into the Nintendo Switch. So it's nice and clearly labelled. So let me just measure up the leads because that is one of the downfalls with this. It is actually a very short cable. So when we're talking about the switch itself, we're looking at approximately one and a half meters, 150 centimeters. And when it comes to the actual charging cable, we're looking at just over one meter, so 100 centimeters. So it would be ideal if it was slightly longer because that's going to be a little bit too short in certain circumstances, but then you're adding to the bulk of it again, aren't you? Right, let's connect this up. Okay, so let's plug this into the back of the TV. And we've just gone into uh, HMI number one there. And now we've got two cables coming out of that. One of the cables is labelled up as the charger, so we're going to plug that into this here. And that goes in there like so. And now this side, which is labelled up switch, will go into here. So I'm just doing this one-handed. There we go. So it's gone black there now, and if I go to the correct input on the TV, we should see that the switch will come up here. And there you go. And it looks perfect. I can't notice any difference between this and the normal dock. If you had them side by side, maybe there would be small differences. But as you can see, it just uh, it looks absolutely fine. Right, let's show you a little bit of gameplay. So this is Pac-Land. Mm. 
and it appears to be working perfectly. There doesn't appear to be lag or anything like that. Okay, and if you wanted a slightly more fast-paced game, let's go to Mario Kart. So as you can see, it works perfectly fine. Right, let's answer some frequently asked questions. And just before that, if I was then to unplug it from here, you will see that it will start working again on the switch again straight away. So frequently asked questions. First one, does it charge? Yes, you can see now it's unplugged from the TV and right now we're just using it as a normal charger. If I was to plug that into the TV, it would charge and dock at the same time. And there it is up on the TV. Does it work on a Switch Lite? No, it charges it just like any other Nintendo charger would do, but of course it's not going to output it on the TV because the Switch Lite is unable to output video. Does it matter which way you put in the USB-C cable into the Switch or into the power brick? The answer is no, they will work either way round. Can you use USB controllers? Unfortunately, you can't because there's no USB port on this. If you want a portable dock that does have USB on it, then look at the Genki Covert dock because that has USB as well as being more portable than the Nintendo Switch one. Does it get warm and is there a chance of overheating? Well, the charger itself just gets ever slightly warm just like any other charger does when it's in use and the HDMI port does have quite a nice bit of heat to it when it's in use. So I'm presuming the chips must be in here that actually do the docking and this is just to provide power to it so it's amazing that they managed to get it in such a small form factor but this is covered in metal so that is going to disperse the heat quite nicely from it but what you will have to be careful of is the proper Nintendo Switch is designed to give access to the air vents at the back here these two vents here and obviously with this here now, more than likely you're going to be lying it flat on something. If you were to lie it flat on a bed or on a rug or carpet, there's a chance of those vents getting blocked. So obviously if you were to bring away a stand, that would be ideal because the vents can still get air to them. Or I suppose if you were to put them on something like this, then you can just have the vents just there. Those vents are now clear at the back there to let air get to them. Does it always work reliably? Most of the time, yes, but it's not as good as the Nintendo Switch dock. This is like other portable docks on the market where sometimes it won't connect. So now, when you plug it in to begin with and plug it in, it will work like you've seen earlier. But then once it's all set up, if I was to repeatedly unplug this and uh, plug it back in again, sometimes it will result on a black screen here. Sometimes it will result on just charging here. Sometimes it will result on the screen up on here but with no audio. But then all you have to do is unplug it, plug it back in again, plug this back in again, and it will all work fine. So I suppose we have to chat about Mr. Elephant sitting in the corner of this room, and that is, will it brick your switch? Well, I can't answer that. I'm not afraid of using third-party adapters, and I've never bricked any of my switches, but many people have. And that's always going to be on the minds of the majority of people who want to buy products like these. But things have moved a long way now from where they were when we had that 5.0 update that started bricking the switches. People understand it a lot more now than they did before. So I think you're a lot safer now than you were before, but Brooke does have you covered, and if you have a look at this insurance on the internet here, you can go on their site and read it thoroughly, then you will see that they have got cover in place. If one of their products does cause damage to the user's equipment, then it looks like they will uh, compensate you for your loss. But obviously, you have to do your own research into that. 
But the only way to have 100% peace of mind is of course just to use the dock that came with your Nintendo Switch one, the official dock. Or take the insides out of the official dock and put it into a third party housing that you can buy on eBay or Amazon to make it a lot smaller. But although it makes it a lot smaller compared to the original size, you're still gonna be using the power supply HDMI cable and the internals in a third party case, which is still going to be at least two to three times the size of this one we're reviewing in this video. And just to wrap up this video, you don't have to just use the switch on it. Right now, I've got the switch side of the cable plugged into this ASUS laptop, and it goes to the HDMI port that goes into the back of the TV. Nothing plugged into the power supply at all, and we're just using it as an output so you can view your laptop on the bigger screen here. So if I was to hit the Windows button here, you can see it comes up on screen up there. So if you're in the market for something to connect up your Switch, phones and laptops to your TV when you're away on holiday or your business trips, then I really do think that this Brook setup could well be useful for you. So if you want to know more about it, head over to the Brook website and check it out. It's called a Switch HDMI cable. Hope you enjoyed this video. I think it's a nice product. I normally do like Brook products purely because they think a little bit out of the box and they think about other ways to make things happen. And that's always a good thing to do. So if you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe for more videos. Take care. Bye now.